Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nib Pickin'. My name is Steven and I'm here giving you some fountain pen reviews from an artist's perspective. Uh, today we're actually going to be looking at an ink. Uh, recently I uploaded a video on Three Oysters Huangto uh, ink, a nice kind of desaturated orange color. I really enjoy a lot and I also bought another ink from Three Oysters at the time was a little bit more expensive of a purchase uh, because of the lovely package it comes in and um, all the extra features that it has. So that is this ink, the um, Sea of Notions Doming Blue ink set. So this is a full set, comes with a couple of extras. I'm going to open it up, do an unboxing, show you what's inside and then draw a little something with it. All right, check it out. So this is the box that it came in. Um, I'm going to open it now. It's uh, wrapped in plastic. So let's see if I can get it undone. This is the most expensive, or it's tied for first place with the most expensive thing I've ever bought that's related to fountain pens. Um, a pen I've got up for review soon is actually uh, cost the exact same. So I'm very excited about this and it takes a, a large amount of restraint for me to wait until I'm ready to shoot these videos to, um, to open these. So I hope you appreciate me. So there we go. Okay, and then just take a look at this box. There's a, a sticker here with little blue stars on it wrapped in tissue paper, a very thin tissue paper around the outside. So we're going to pull that open. And this is the box that it came in. You're telling me there's more plastic to undo. No, it looks like... Um, Looks like, okay, there's a little plastic uh, sleeve and inside, ooh, there is a lovely art card and uh, that looks like the name, the signature of the artist, Doming. Yeah, okay. Um, and then in the center it says, Kwanyom Ye Pada, which means the Sea of Notions. That's the name of the ink. Doming Blue. Again, I believe that is the name of the artist that designed the, um, the pictures that are on the outside. So this is really cool. I gotta figure out a way that I can use this, display it somewhere. Um, I really like the art style. It's something, uh, it's, it's really detailed, but it's also whimsical and fantastical and um, pretty cool. Nice little addition to the box. Underneath, there's another one, and this looks to be like it might be in the color of the ink. Again, it's got a very nice uh, amount of detail. It's got some cool value shifts. And um, it says Toming Blue on the bottom there. And the backside is blank. Okay. And then uh, it says in the center, there's another character. It looks to be, again, the same artist. Um, this in Korean says recipe card underneath um, recipe card. So obviously just uh, a direct translation of the English terms. All right. And okay, cool. So this is actually in Korean. Um, I'm not going to go and translate all of this. I think that would take way too much time. Um, All right, but uh, so this is uh, explaining the, the the gist of this is that it's explaining um, how to mix to create different shades of ink. And we'll get into why that is and when we get into the box as well. Um, it gives you a couple of important information about how to mix it. it. looks like they're saying put one or two grams of 
the original ink color and then the mermaid tears, which I'll talk about what that means in a little bit. Um, and then start adding a few drops and you can create a gradient like this. So different colors of ink and they're recommending that you mix in a separate container and then add that into your pen, which is seems like a lot of work, but it could be worth it. Let's find out. Um, and these are kind of credits over here, the people who were involved. Um, it's the artist and the producer. And then the brand name, Three Oysters, is the ink, um, the printing company, and the package design. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information that's interesting here. You'd have to be able to speak Korean to get most of it, but um, you know, I do speak a little bit of Korean, so I'm able to kind of read and decipher what this means, but we won't go into too much detail about that. It's interesting to have. Anyway there's that okay and then here's the box it's got this nice little gold kind of engraved um, printing on the top doming blue ink set and again it says which means the sea of notions and we're going to open this box up i think this is going to be exciting it opens via this ribbon here and So the first part that opens is this kind of pop-out looking thing. And again, it says, the sea of notions. There's some flying fish. It's a little bit of a, a pop-up book action. And there's that picture that was on the front of the, the uh, recipe card. And then it's a very interesting box. I'm not sure if I'm gonna try and find something to do with it, but um, the art design is really lovely. I, I understand that that's part of the cost of the ink but uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this box. <laughs> okay. Um, so here we go, a little bit of a, hmm, this doesn't open as well as I'd hoped it would over here. It's these areas, a hmm, little bit of a, little bit of an error there. It's a shame, but here's the ink it's stuck in there. Okay, really uh, solid foam core right here. It feels very strong and sturdy, like I can keep this box and continue to keep the ink inside. Maybe I will. I noticed this with the other Three Oysters ink that I bought. The foam is pretty solid, so that's a lot of good protection. Um, and then this right here, I am very curious as to what it's actually made out of, but... Um, this bottle says um, which means um, mermaid tears which is delightfully dramatic uh, if you've ever watched a Korean drama I think that um, you will uh, appreciate how delightfully dramatic that title is but uh, it's a clear liquid and adding it changes the um, the saturation of the ink so, hmm, a little bit of a off-kilter sense there, but uh, this comes with a little eyedropper bottle, so. Yeah, the bottle itself, yeah, appears to be made of plastic, and these outside, this cap is also made of plastic. A little disappointing that it's made of plastic for uh, how much I paid for the ink, but the star of the show is, of course, this ink. Again, it says, um, which means Sea of Notions. Um, there's the artwork that they designed for the box. It keeps showing up. Here's the flying fish on the left-hand side. The back we can see the tail of the mermaid it's a very nice deep saturated blue color so I'm interested in um, testing a few different iterations of this ink so we're gonna pull out my dip pen and we're going to try some different colors um, and uh, mix something up to see if we can get a really nice color uh, mixing here
So all right, let's check that out. Okay, we're gonna do some ink tests and I am armed today with a <clears throat> dip pen um, because I think uh, the nature of this ink and the fact that you're supposed to kind of mix to get the color that you want um, it'd be inconvenient to do that with a fountain pen, but once I've got a mix that I like, I might fill one of my fountain pens up with it. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of writing, a little bit of hatching, see what we can work out here. So this particular nib pen, uh, dip pen nib I bought with my wife when I went to Paris in 2017. And um, I don't think that this nib is actually a Parisian nib. I'm not sure exactly where it comes from, but I've seen it lots of other places too. Um, but it, it's a pretty cool little nib. It's a, a non-flexible nib, so it, it draws in just kind of straight lines, kind of the way that fountain pens do, so it's a good comparison there. So uh, I'm going to actually set this upright, and I will use the cap as an inkwell, and hopefully we will not spill ink all over. Okay, there we go. All right, I've got the ink and may have spilled a little bit. We won't worry about that right now. I'm going to dip and I'm going to try uh, drawing with a full strength. I'm going to label this as full. Dip pens, got to keep dipping them. Full strength. All right. So from here, we've got we've got a nice. It's a lovely color. It's um, it's very saturated, as you would imagine. Oh, dip pens. I just remembered why I stopped using them. Lots of dipping. All right, so uh, as you can see, I've decided to spare you this lengthy clip. I spent about 15 minutes mixing this ink and um, realizing that these mermaid tears do not go very far in diluting the color. It's a very pigmented ink, which is, you know, um, a great value that uh, the color doesn't lighten up super fast, so it's a very strong color. Um, but I really enjoyed the color when it was mixed even more. You're gonna see towards the end I get as far, I'm going by fives and then later by tens and then later by twenties and I end up going to 100 little droplets of these mermaid tears in the ink. Um, it was sort of a tedious process. Uh, made more tedious by the dip pen, which I found frustrating to be dipping over and over again. So I'm definitely a fountain pen man myself. Um, but uh, this is one of the things that is kind of a knock against the ink itself. The process of adding droplets and mixing your own color, it, it just isn't that convenient for a fountain pen. And I didn't have anywhere besides the cap to mix them in, so... Um, that ended up being a little bit of a stressor. Do love the color of the ink, and as you can see with the little um, swatches that I'm putting down here, it does progressively get lighter, but the colors look pretty much the same until about uh, 50 tiers and then 100 tiers, which is the next one that I do, is a lot lighter. Um, so I liked it at 100 tears, uh, which means that there's more of the blue ink than the mermaid tears can dilute to my liking. So that's a frustrating thing as well. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it turned out okay. Um, the funny thing is that since I, I'm going to show you a clip in a little bit, since I mixed so much as I was adding those drops in, I decided to fill up one of my pens and I couldn't do it. As you can see, it doesn't actually, the, the ink was too shallow to actually fill up. So I had to go in with a syringe um, and fill up my ink into my pen. And then I filled that pen, which is a, a piston filler with a lot of room. And that ended up still having a lot left over. 
And so I went in and filled up another pen and another pen and another pen. And I got ink all over my hands. Um, and my wife wasn't happy about that. We worked it out, it's fine. But then all in all, I ended up filling six of my pens with all the ink that I mixed because I mixed too much trying to get it as light as I wanted. So um, that is kind of a knock against uh, the ink <laughs> because now I have to use them all up. And I, I actually have used most of them up now. So um, I really do like the color and I've enjoyed using it uh, with all of these pens. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, here's a little drawing sample I did. This is a birthday card for my sister. Um, you might think that I'm a good big brother for making a birthday card. However, at the time that I was recording this, it was two weeks past my sister's birthday, so I am a bad older brother who sends late gifts. Um, but actually, I've been working on this for a while. Hand lettering is not really my thing. I'm not very good at it. So, um... I spent a lot of time doing the uh, composition for this. I have my sketchbook is full of pages and pages of me coming up with uh, various different ways to say this dumb thing that I wanted to say, uh, which captures my mindset right now during this coronavirus pandemic, working from home, having to teach uh, classes. I'm a middle school teacher, um, trying to get kids to do their homework when you're not physically there with them is a horrible struggle that I hope no one else uh, has to endure after this pandemic. So um, that's the advice I have to you. Time flies when you're in a constant state of panic. Um, anyway, happy birthday to my sister. I love you so much. I hope you enjoy this card even though it is two weeks late. Uh, the colors worked out really well for me. I think using this in a monotone with a light color was really fun. Uh, I ended up going through and doing these lines, which kind of scared me because I'm left-handed. I thought they were going to smudge, but they didn't, which was very, uh, very fortunate and very good. So this ended up looking really nice. I'm very happy with the end result, as you'll see in a minute. Um, I'll be sending it off to my sister as soon as I get the address for her new place. Uh, yeah, all in all, I, I had a really good time with this ink and I will be using it a lot in the future. Awesome. All right, so some final thoughts on this ink. Um, first of all, the packaging and the unboxing experience was amazing. Um, I kind of get why people enjoy looking at these unboxing videos after watching this. It wasn't something I was into before. Um, the color is wonderful. I love it. I think it's a beautiful blue color. Um, as far as the whole idea of the um, mixing of inks together, the mermaid tear, kind of the clear liquid plus the blue itself to get the color that you want. In theory, it works but I feel like it's a little bit too much of a mess. Um, and I kind of wish that the color was just pre-mixed as kind of the lighter blue color, which I really like and I've enjoyed using in my pens. Um, for me, I feel like this idea of mixing your ink before loading it into a pen isn't super uh, congruent with the uh, fountain pen experience. I might feel differently if I had a few sample vials where I could mix some ink and then be able to fill my pen easily, but uh, I had to use a syringe because um, there wasn't really any reasonable way for me to fill the pen normally. So um, that's points against it for me. Uh, I could imagine if they created this ink uh, at Three Oysters and they really wanted to have this great packaging experience and the unboxing and they wanted to charge what they charged, for it, um, then, you know, this sort of makes sense. However, at the end of the day, I'd rather pay a little less uh, money for a lot less packaging and still enjoy a really great ink. Um, anyway, that is my review of the Three Oysters Sea of Notions ink. 
I actually really do love this ink and I will be using it in my pens a lot in the future. Um, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you would like to see more content from me. All right, I'll catch you next time. Thank you.